So uh, let's start with the, the first questions. Jill? So we'll begin with registration questions. Uh, we'll start with Ange. So when does registration begin and what if I'm unavailable to register at this time? So registration, hi everybody. Um, sorry about that. My name is Angela Canahan. I'm the manager of admissions here. Welcome. Um, orientation is scheduled to open on December the 8th. Um, the, an email will go out to students before that happens and students will have a time when their program is open for registration. So once you get that email, please review the email carefully to make sure that you know the time that your program is uh, opening for registration. The window for registration will remain open till the 10 day count um, in January. So uh, there's plenty of time to register, uh, plenty of time to register before classes begin. And uh, like I said, please watch out for that email with more instructions on how to register and when to register. Thanks, Ange. We have another question for you. How do I register for classes and what happens if I have issues when I'm registering? So that's a great question. Um, registration is through self-service. So in that email that you'll receive about the dates and times that your window opens is a link to registration. In that email will also be a link to a Zoom call that students could uh, jump on and um, attend and ask any questions that they have um, if they're having issues during the registration process. There's also an admissions email, which is admissions at canadorcollege.ca that students can ask their questions and uh, somebody will email them back and contact them to support them through the process. Fantastic, thank you. Um, now we have a question for Sylvie. Uh, what is my student number and where can I find it? Hi there, I'm Sylvie. Your student number is actually, um, it's on the second page of your LOA, of your offer letter, and it will start with a zero zero if you're a newer student. Fantastic. The next question. Do I submit my payment, do I, sorry, do I need to pay my full tuition before I register for classes? And how do I submit a payment? You do. Um, so the full tuition for this current semester that's starting in the winter needs to be paid in full in order for you to be permitted to register. Um, you can make your payment, if you're out of country, you can make it through Flywire. The information is on page three of your LOA or page four. Um, it should be page three. So you can make your payment from outside Canada through Flywire. If you're in Canada, you can make your payment through your bank, uh, online banking, mobile banking, you would add Canada or college as the payee, and your student ID is the account number. You must, and I have to, I have to stress this, you must, must, must use your student ID as the account number. Otherwise, it's very difficult to link your payment to your student account. Excellent. And back to you, Angela. How do I get a student card and when will it be ready for pickup? Where do I get it? Okay, so that's a good question as well. Um, this year, um, we've launched a new um, uh, app. Well, it's not an app. It's a link that you put on your phone and it's a digital ID card. And on that is, is your bus pass as well. So you will receive an email. Um, those that are first year students will receive the email. They'll be able to um, open the link and, and enter their information. And once they've done that, and there'll be instructions in the email, they'll have um, a bus pass, and which is your student card as well, on their cell phone. And can students opt out of the bus pass? No, they cannot. Um, the bus pass is a mandatory auxiliary fee uh, that was voted in by the students, so it's there's no option to opt out of it. Excellent, thank you. All right, and we'll move on to Sunny for our next round of questions. Sure, thank you, Jill. So now we're going to talk about the class schedule and program delivery. Um, again, I'm going to start with Angela. So the first question is, how and when will I get a class schedule? Do I get to choose my own schedule? So when registration opens up, um, you will be guided through the process. And at the end of the process, you will um, see the options for uh, registering. 
And because um, Canada College and all, most colleges are block registration, the courses that you are required to register in are all set up for you and you just, you're able to choose the block. If there's more than one section of the block, you're able to see the schedules for um, the blocks and be able to pick from those blocks. The only option that you do have though, is to pick your gen ed. So that's the one, one uh, course that you will be able to choose. Um, the rest will all be prescribed for you. Perfect. Thank you, Angela. That's very clear. I have another question for you. How can I tell if my class is going to be online or in person? Okay, so um, there is information on the website on which programs are being delivered remotely um, and which are face-to-face. So you can always check that on, on the website and hopefully we'll have the link in the chat. Um, other than that, when you get your schedule, if there's no room attached to your uh, course delivery, then that means there is that it's, it's going to be delivered remotely. You may have a time. So that means there will be a time where you are going to class remotely. Most of the general education courses will not have a time. Um, and they won't have a classroom, so they're at, at your own time, you, you do the course, but the other courses will have a schedule and without a classroom, they are remote. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. We keep going. I have another question for you. Okay. What, <laughs> what does it mean if my program is hybrid? Do I need to be on campus? If the program is hybrid delivery, um, then you, um, there might be classes that are delivered in class. So yes, there is, um, there, there might be a class, a classroom that is delivered face to face. So check, um, check the website, like I said before, and make sure that if your program is hybrid, that you're prepared to attend in class. Okay. Thank you so much. You can take a break now. I have a question for Thank CLB. <laughs> Sylvie, can I change my program before the start of classes? No, you can't. Um, unfortunately, once you receive your offer letter, that is, that is your offer. So that is the program you apply to. That is the program that you need to stick with. The only way um, that anybody can ever change the program is they need to withdraw their offer on OCAS and then pay and reapply. It's not recommended to do that because our seats are full right now. Um, if you take that chance, that's at your own risk. You're not guaranteed a seat in, if you want to change programs. Sure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So now we have some questions about deferrals and campus change. And Sylvie, we're going to uh, turn to you again for the next three questions. Sure. So what is the last date for deferral? So the last date for deferral for winter is December 21st. And can I cancel a deferral request? Uh, not normally. Once you submit your deferral, that, that's it. Um, your seat is normally given to someone else that's been on the waiting list. Once registration opens, you can contact us via email at admissions.international. However, you're not guaranteed to uh, receive a seat if you want to prepone your deferral. And you have to understand that the influx of emails that come in at that time during the first couple of weeks of registration is substantial and we're not guaranteed to get to your email in time if that's what you wish. So really think hard, consider whether or not a deferral is really what you want to do before you actually submit it. Excellent. And uh, last one for now, Sylvie, can I change campuses? Unfortunately not. It's not something that can be done because our seat plan is already made. All programs are full. The seats have been filled. So unfortunately, we can't accommodate campus changes. Thank you. So now we will start with some important part of session that is related to immigration process and documentation. So this is the visas, uh, study permit, and arrival questions. And maybe uh, Sylvie or Angela can help us a little bit with these answers. So the first one that we have is, do we need a visa approval letter for registrations? I, it's always definitely 
highly recommend it. Uh, we don't recommend registering without approval of your visa or study permit. Um, if you do, it's at your own risk. The second that you register, you are bound by Canada's policies and refund uh, and guidelines and refund policies. So it's very important that you read everything on your LOA, that you get very familiar with Canada's website and look at the policies. Once you register, I can't stress this enough, you are bound by the refund policy. You're not guaranteed to get any refund back if you're refused. Um, and then if you withdraw after the 10th day of class, there's absolutely no refund. So just remember, it's only going to be partial refund before 10th day of class, depending on your situation. And after the 10th day, no refund. So I never recommend that you register if you don't have a visa approval. Okay, thank you so much. Another question is, what happens if there are visa delays? Who do I reach out to? Um, visa delays, I would say would be the, it really depends. If there's a delay in your visa, then I recommend considering deferring until the next available term. Um, reach out to your agent. If you have an agent, your agent will have to do the deferral on your behalf. If you don't have an agent, then you can submit the deferral yourself on OCAS. You would already have access to your application. Um, and we have our international student advisors as well that are available. Um, you know, maybe we could put their emails in the in the Q and A. Sure. Thank you. Uh, next question is: What should I do after I get my visa? So once you get your visa approval, upload this to uh, your application. So if you have an agent, your agent will upload it to your OCAS application. And if you don't have an agent, then you would upload it to uh, documents in your application. Same thing with your study permit. Okay. And can I start my classes without having a study permit? Again, it's the same question as the visa, right? So it's never recommended. Um, for those who may not have been on when I answered the question about the visa being approved, I always say, no, don't do it. However, the system will allow you to register. But I always say, please do not register if you don't have your study permit approval. If you don't have a visa approval, you are bound by Canada's uh, refund policies, all policies, honestly. I um, mean, you're never guaranteed any money back if you get a visa refusal. Please visit. Uh, we'll put the link in the, on the, in the chat. Just visit the link on our website and get very familiar, very familiar with our refund policies. Okay. And this question is, do I need a travel support letter? If so, how I get it? Um, so it is my understanding just recently that IRCC has announced that it's actually no longer needed. So you can actually travel with your LOA. Um, I would recommend probably your fee receipts as well. And if you download the iSent app, there's uh, pre-arrival forms in there and it'll tell you exactly what you need to be able to travel, which is really handy. But no, right now, travel support letters are not needed. Great. Next question, Sylvie. What is the refund policy for international students? Uh, so again, it's, I always say, look at our website. We're going to put the link in the chat. If you register and you receive a visa refusal within the first 10 days of class, we will withhold $300 as an administration fee, uh, and then you'll receive partial refund from there. If you receive a visa refusal and you have registered and you do not, and sorry, the $300 is only withheld if you provide the visa refusal letter. Without proof of a visa refusal within the first 10 days of class, there's, we withhold $2,400. After the 10th day of class, there is no refund at all. Thank you. And my last question for you, Sylvie. What is the last date for international student to land in Canada? Uh, well, if, there, if your whole program is online, remote, um, it, technically it doesn't really matter which day you come. However, if your program is hybrid or high flex, you need to be in North Bay on campus, very first day of class. 
So I would say for that, at the very least, uh, we always tell you to give yourself two weeks before classes begin. It gives you time to acclimate yourself to your new environment. Um, if you're, you know, stuck for housing, you need to find housing or, uh, you know, school supplies, anything like that. It just gives you time to settle in. Um, also, we say two weeks ahead of time because you never know if you're going to have any issues at the airport with uh, Canadian Border Services. So always allow yourself a few days before the first day of class. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, Sylvie.